Hello everyone. Today, we are preparing for holidays by making some jewelry. And it's gonna be interesting because I forgot my tripod at home. So let's hope we can, uh, I don't know, get some stable footage here and there. I have my little baby tripod, but I, I don't, I can't promise anything. So we'll have a ring to make for Alexis. Uh, I have a pendant to make for my niece. And there's something else. There's a third thing that I don't remember at the moment. But before we do that, I was sent a box. So I thought we should open it really quick. So let's do that first. I was sent a Christmas box by a longtime viewer of the channel, Lisa Largent. Thank you so much. I'm super excited to see what's in here. The box has opened. Let's see what's in here. Ew! Fossily goodness. Fossily goodness and a note. Oh my gosh. I just saw one word and my excitement just peaked. Oh my gosh. You know what? We're gonna open that last. We'll save that for last. Man, look at the, oh wow. Okay, that's freaking cool. Okay, so we got really nice brachiopods and I believe that's either coral or crinoid right next to them. Wow. Okay, that's freaking awesome. Wow, there's a lot of brachiopods in here. Look at all the shells. <laughs> That's awesome, I love it. And then this, oh, this looks like some Haunted Ridge stuff. That Haunted Ridge lacy goodness, look at that. If we get a little closer, look at the lace pattern in there. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful. Wow, oh my God, okay, yeah, that is super lacy, wow. Okay, that's gonna be amazing. Super excited about that. I actually am not familiar. Oh, okay, more Haunted Ridge stuff. <laughs> it took a second to click because I looked at it from this angle and then I rolled it over and saw more lace and then crystals on top. So yeah, that has to be more Haunted Ridge stuff. I love Haunted Ridge stuff. That stuff is amazing. That's some more lace in there. Some more lace in there. Uh, definitely more lacy goodness Haunted Ridge stuff, I'm sure. Oh my gosh, yeah, we gotta do some cutting and polishing. And then this one, you've got your lacy goodness, but then on top, there's there's some smokies in there. Yep, definitely, definitely Haunted Ridge stuff. I love Haunted Ridge stuff. Okay, now let's open this, save for last. I saw one word, it was all I needed to see to be very, very excited. Oh yeah, ha ha ha, trilobite. I love these things so much. I want to find my own so freaking bad. They are in Montana, but they are like about as far away as you could possibly get from me. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, Lisa. I think we are actually gonna start with the quartz pendant. Just cause I think it'll be pretty quick and easy. She actually found this one, my niece did. I thought it would be fun to turn it into a pendant for her. So, first things first. We actually need to flatten, one sec. This is hard without a tripod. How do people do this? I guess they don't, they have tripods. Anyway, <laughs> first things first is I need to flatten that bottom because we're actually gonna drill a little hole into it and put a post in there and then glue it in place. But we need to make a cup for it and yeah, it needs to be flat before we can do that. So, I'm gonna take this to the uh, fasting machine because I currently have a low grid plate on there <laughs> and it's closer and flatten that base, and then other things will happen, inevitably. We have a flat surface cut onto this crystal. So now I'm gonna take this, which is a little length of bezel wire. You'll notice that all of the silver I'm using today is tiny little scraps because I need to order more, and yeah, <laughs> it's, it's becoming a problem. Anyway though, I'm gonna set this down right here and then lay this down right here. Oh, this is gonna be hard with such small bezel wire. Oh gosh. And we're basically just gonna wrap it around to fit the shape of the crystal. Oh yeah, that's gonna be tricky with how little that is. Um, let's just do a time lapse of me struggling. Now that those edges are meeting, I'm gonna put this in this little tiny clamp right here. Make sure everything is lined up well. I'm gonna take some of this, which is flux, which there's some 
uh, crazy chemistry involved with flux. It actually changes the melting point of specific locations, wherever it's touching, which allows your solder to flow a little bit easier. So, uh, where, speaking of, where is my solder? Where did I put that? I just had it. Everyone just calm down. I found it. It's right here. And then we're gonna do this. Oh, I'm in the wrong spot. One sec. This is so hard without my tripod. I'm gonna take my torch. And I'm gonna start heating this. Until I put a little dollop right there. Probably more than I needed, but oh well, it's fine. This is hard solder, so it will polish really nicely. Let that flow. And quench it. Normally you'd pickle this. Pickle is just a solution that gets rid of um, iron or fire scale, that kind of stuff, but it's so small, it really doesn't matter. And we can file that and get it all situated and it's good to go. All right, so we have our little walls shaped. So, um, crap, I just forgot which side is up. Oh no, one sec. Oh my gosh, if I do it this way, fits perfectly. So, same thing, I'm gonna just put in a drop of flux in here. Line the walls, literally perfect size. That's awesome. Okay, so I'm out of pauldrons, which are little tiny squares of solder. So instead, I'm just going to cut up some pieces of my wire and place it where I need it to go. Alrighty, so from here, we just clip off the extra silver and polish and good to go. And I'm sure a lot of you are wondering what the heck this is. You're supposed to use refractory brick. Well, this is actually plaster of Paris and I have used both and I have noticed no difference other than the fact that refractory brick lasts longer. But plaster of Paris is so dang cheap, it really doesn't matter. is made and it will go like right here yes right there so next thing we need to do is make a post that will go actually into the quartz crystal I think it's gonna be important just because the cup is so small to have something in there that's uh, extra securing so I'm gonna take some of this which is just silver wire, fine silver wire. And we're gonna do a thing so that we can get more thickness out of it. So I'm gonna clip off a length like that. Then I'm gonna, let's see, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna clip off another length right here. And then I'm gonna clip off another length right here so that I get three lengths of wire. Doesn't need to be long, this is more than it needs to be but it gives me uh, more room to work with. Now I'm gonna hold them right here with these. I'm gonna grab more pliers and we're going to, oh gosh, you're falling. Dude, this is a disaster without my tripod. I did not realize how much I rely on that thing. We're gonna just twist. All right, so now we have a three ply rope essentially. But it's not gonna stay woven. That is actually uh, just so that we can get some more rigidity and um, thickness out of it. So now I'm gonna put it on this right here. Now I'm gonna soak it with some flux. All right, so that is soaked in flux. So now I'm gonna move stuff out of the way so I don't melt things like I normally do. All right, so we just ran solder throughout that whole thing which just locked everything together, and now it is one homogeneous piece of wire. So I'm gonna just file it, get it down to a level shape, and we're good to go. Demonstration. This is the wire by itself. It is extremely uh, soft. It is not very sturdy. Even when you wrap them into three, they are still very bendable. But by wrapping them into a three-ply thread and then securing them with hard solder, we now have a very rigid post 
that I can use for the quartz crystal. But it's gonna double as something else. I'm gonna clip this right, right there. There's our post. But we also just created our loop for the necklace. All right, I just heated this up. Thought I was recording, wasn't recording. This is the post, I just heated it up and melted just a wee tiny bit of solder onto it, focus. So it will stick a little easier. All right, well, let's put it in. And there it is, it is assembled, it is finished. So now all we have to do is uh, put the stone in there and polish it up. It is done, and I think it looks really good. It's a pretty little quartz crystal made cooler by the fact that it's one that she found. So I'm sure she's gonna be excited about that. I hope she likes it. So Alexis does a lot of uh, knitting and a lot of color work. In the world of knitting and color work, there is a, uh, a thing that you can wear on your finger to do this and make it easier. So basically with color work, you have like multiple colors of yarn in multiple rolls of yarn. I know there's a word for it, and I'm gonna get roasted by her for not remembering what it is. <laughs> but essentially you need to keep them separated at all times, otherwise it's a tangled mess. So, you can actually make a ring that does this, uh, fulfills this task, and it's pretty cool, and I think gonna be pretty quick and simple, so let's do it. All right, first things first, we just need to make a ring. That's much better. I went home and got the tripod. It's just too hard. Okay, so we have our band made right here. So next thing we need to do is, um, this feels weird because I'm so used to making uh, jewelry with stones. So <laughs> this feels odd. We need to make a little platform out of silver and I think we're gonna just recycle some of my old band. I'm gonna cut off a little section of that. I think that'll work. Cut two lengths off, but now I need them to become homogenous. So I'm gonna just run a little bit of flux and some of that wire with hard solder and, you know, met, blah, 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 blah. I don't, what word was I trying to say there? Platform is made, ring is made, which means we have to do something. Remember that thing we did with the wire where we twisted it together to make thicker wire? Well, we're doing that again, but longer this time. So I'm gonna take, where are they? There they are. These, right here. And I'm gonna bend this. Eh. Yes, the noises are required, like that. That got wonky on me. Then, I'm going to grab it here. And come back the other direction, like that. And I'm gonna just keep doing that until I run out of silk. And you eventually wind up with something that looks like this.
right, it is done. And now that it is done, I can actually demonstrate what its purpose is. Okay, so you've got your yarn. Imagine that these are two different colors. <laughs> so you're making like a hat or a sock or something. You've got your ring, but you have to keep them separate. So what you do, apparently, this is all hypothetical because I don't knit, but I know she knows, is you, to keep them separate, feed them through like that. So then you can switch back and forth and things don't get tangled and it keeps everything nice and orderly. Again, theoretically. <laughs> well, there it is. And that marks the first ring I've ever made that has no stone involved. All right guys, well, I think that is actually gonna do it for this one. I was gonna do another thing, but I'm afraid of how long this video is. It feels in my brain because both projects were fairly simple that this should be a short video. Maybe it is, I haven't started editing yet, but then I always remember how long tutorials get. Uh, yeah, there's lots of explaining. They can get away from you really quick. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys thought of the necklace and the ring down in the comments. If you have crystals that you want to turn into necklaces, that is a great and easy way to do it. And um, jury's still out on the ring. I don't know if it works or not. I guess I won't know till uh, after she receives it. Um, I have some things on the way and I'm super, super excited. One thing I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet because I don't have what I need to run it, but I'm super excited. Blade is ordered, which means saw will be up and running very, very soon. And I have more silver on the way. So now that uh, winter is in full swing, I think we're gonna be diving into some lapidary projects here soon. We know if you guys enjoyed seeing the silversmithing though, it's something I love doing and do on a weekly basis. So it'd be fun to record more of what I do. Uh, you know, if you guys wanna see more, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'll have links to things and whatnot. Also stuff up in the description. And yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this one. I hope you all enjoyed and I'll see you next time.